Hello everyone, Melody here, mom of four and our blended family of six. Welcome to Homeschool Happy Hour. Today we are going to talk about our plans for my youngest homeschoolers eighth grade year. If you are new here, my name is Melody. This coming year will be my 11th year homeschooling my two biological children. I also have two bonus kids in the house that have attended public school. And on this channel, we talk about all things secular homeschooling, curriculum, life choices, the good, the bad, the ugly, all that kind of stuff. So if you are interested in any of that, make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that you can follow along as we make our way through this homeschooling journey. Today, I want to talk to you guys about my youngest homeschoolers eighth grade plan. Now, I'm not gonna go into huge detail about each thing that we picked. I'm just gonna kind of give you an overview of what we picked, what we're planning to work on for next year. If you are new to homeschooling or you're new to this channel, just as a heads up, a plan is just that, it's a plan. We kind of lay out a framework for ourselves and then we embrace one of the most beautiful things about homeschooling and we change things if we need to as we go along. Usually our framework is pretty solid. Sometimes we make big changes. Obviously I've been doing this for a minute, so we're at the point where we don't make as many major changes throughout the year because we've kind of found our rhythm but kids are always growing and changing, so you never know what's gonna happen. That being said, I have a stack of materials that I wanted to give you a glance at so you can see what we're gonna be doing for next year. I also have two very cute kittens in this room. So if you hear scratching and pattering and stuff, I'm sorry. I tried to lock them out of the room and they just stood outside that door and yelled at me, which would be even more annoying <laughs> than their little scratches and their pattery feet. So. Give me grace, have patience with the cats. Recently, I talked about can you homeschool for free in an alternate video. If you're interested in more of that, go ahead and check that video out. Video out. But today I'm going to not only be showing you what I have chosen for our framework for next year, but also sharing with you what the cost is in that, which is really, really tiny and as a review, a reminder, if you didn't watch that video, when I say homeschooling for free, I'm comparing free to how much would I spend or have I spent or do I spend on my public school kiddos. So I don't include things like extracur extracurricular activities that I would have to put money into because even if they're in public school, I'd still be paying for that. So that really doesn't have anything to do with homeschooling specifically. But I am gonna talk to you about the price for our academic plan if you will. So, drum roll please, let's get started. I have stacks and stacks of books over here. So where do I begin? All right, I got a stack in my lap. We are good to go. Bean Bean is 12, so she'll be 12 going into next school year, and it will be, again, her eighth grade year as a homeschooler. Now we use grades loosely. They're pretty arbitrary. The reason why I label them with grades, so to speak, is because we do participate with the public school for sports. And because of that, we need to give them a grade for that participation. It's also because I'm homeschooling after divorce. So we kind of do things a little bit differently than we probably would have to if that wasn't the case, just to keep everything very clear and very smooth as we navigate through court things with their other biological parent when that comes up. Fortunately, we are not dealing with any of that right now, but always be prepared. <laughs> Don't like getting caught off guard. All right, let's start with chemistry. The first thing that I'm going to be having Bean Bean do next year is chemistry. Now, the resources that I'm using for chemistry, the main resource that I will be using for chemistry will be Modern States. That is a free online program that is directly connected to CLEP testing. If you haven't heard of CLEP testing, it is college level 
examination preparation I don't remember I can never ever remember what it's called and it basically it's a college exam that if you pass that exam you get college credits for it and so we're doubling that with our homeschool so yes she's in eighth grade but she is earning high school credits this year and she can potentially if she chooses to take the CLEP exam and passes them get college credits for her work this year. There's really no age limit on when she can do things like that. So we'll just see where she's at. The goal is not for her specifically to get college credits this year, but I really like this resource. It's free and I feel like even if she doesn't test out, it'll help prepare her in the future should she decide to test. She also really loves baking. So I purchased this book called Culinary Reactions, and it's all about chemistry and how that relates to baking and cooking. And so I wanted her to be able to do chemistry, but also related to something that she loves. I'll try to pop up prices as we go. Like I said, Modern States is zero dollars, but this book is looking, oh, it was $15 on Amazon. So it's an optional purchase. I could have, if I had a well-stocked library, they might not even have it in my library, or I could request it from my library and they might purchase it for me. I like having books that I get to keep, that I get to put on my shelf. And there are books, we don't have to return them, we don't have to share them. So I bought it, but it was $15. So that is essentially how much we spent on chemistry for next year. We will also be using YouTube resources for videos and supplements that go along with the modern states. Subject number two, English language arts. We're keeping this one really simple. Let's set this one aside. For English language arts, I'm actually going to wrap that in with history a little bit because we're not going to actively be doing like a history specific subject next year. Our family has historically been very heavy on history. We study it all the time. And so we're going to kind of take a step back from being quite as intentional on that subject. And we're just going to wrap that into our English language arts. My kids love to read. And so I have a couple books here that I'm going to put in her must read stack. That will be Helen Keller and Showdown at the Little Bighorn. But as we go through the year, we'll probably be making trips to the library in order to pick up more books that are history related that she can build upon for the year. But for reading and comprehension and all that kind of stuff, we're or reading, yeah, I said reading. I meant to say for English language arts. I don't even know what I'm saying. For English language arts, we're really gonna focus heavily on reading, comprehension, understanding that. However, grammar is still important. So we are going to be using Fix-It Grammar. I've got Robin Hood level three. It's pretty basic. It's just helping them through learning how to break down sentences, knowing the parts of a sentence, all that kind of stuff. It also wraps in some handwriting, which I really appreciate. But that's kind of it for English language arts. Again, as we get older, as we move along, I have been able to see how much curriculum we don't need and how much we can wrap the things we're learning into what we're already doing. Now, prices on these, I didn't add up a price for these because I already had them on my shelf, but it looks like on the back, this one says it's $6. This one says it's $19 that we bought when we were at Little Bighorn, but I'm counting these as $0 because they're already on my shelf. And again, I could have gotten them for free at my library, specifically this one. I know my library has that one. So you really could just pick any history books that you like from the library or off your shelf if you're like me and you're a history nerd and you have history books coming out your ears on your shelf. However, Fix It Grammar, I did purchase for this year and that was, oh gosh, 20 bucks. I spent $20 on this for Bing Bing for her eighth grade year. So our grand total spent for English language arts for this coming year is $20 plus $0 for chemistry. Yeah, we're at a $20 total for our curriculum so far. That's not bad. 
Not bad, guys. All right, our next curriculum or subject area, I guess we're going to explore is algebra. She has been doing pre-algebra, algebra slash algebra this year. She says she hates math, but it comes really easily to her. And so we're going to move forward and we're gonna use modern states for her algebra for this coming year. Again, that is zero dollars, it's free. And if she wants to, it will prepare her for a CLEP exam at the end of the year. So she now has a potential of two college courses under her belt if she chooses to test out of them. Otherwise, we're just learning and we have the materials we need online. So that's chemistry, English language arts, algebra. Our next subject, number four, will be like a health subject. Basically, we're gonna be working on healthy relationships. I put together a very small curriculum I'm calling Relationships Wise, and it's all about identifying healthy versus abusive relationships, resources that you can use for yourself or somebody else that they may need it that's in your life, easy to access. Personally, I feel like these are vital life skills and so I teach them very directly to my children. Now, somebody did ask me to go into more detail about it and I will in another video, but this is basically it, guys. It's this little tiny packet of information that I've gotten, a list of online resources, and then it actually has three books. I know that when I did this with the prisoner, because she used this same curriculum, that third book we just borrowed from the library, which we will do again. And so I am not, again, adding these in my total for the year because I know they have them at my library. But if I wanted to, this one was $17 and this one is $10. Obviously I'm rounding up to the nearest dollar. You don't need to know that it's $9.95. So, but that was $0 for me and potentially $0 anyway, if I get it from my library. So we're still at a grand total of $20. Anywho, next subject area for Bean Bean will be music. And we are no longer taking active piano lessons in person because her piano teacher isn't teaching anymore, which is really sad. But it also saves us on budget. So we're not paying for piano lessons. We will be doing piano through Hoffman Academy, another online resource that is free, zero dollars. You can pay to do like a, like a premium membership where you get all these printables and things like that. And that's like, I wrote it down, wait for it, mm, $20 optional. It's not expensive at all. It's actually a really great program. If that's something you're interested, check them out. But we've used it before and the free version totally served our needs. So I'm not gonna be paying for that at all. So we'll be continuing with music in that way. Her last individual subject will be Spanish. She's still working on Spanish. She's gonna be using Duolingo. And then we just watch videos in Spanish. We practice Spanish together, all that kind of fun stuff. Now Duolingo is $120 per year for a whole family. So that cover, I use it. Um, the prisoner uses it. She actually just sent me a thing and she's on like her 600th day uninterrupted. And I think the cat's about to pull my camera down. Hmm, hopefully she doesn't. Anyway, so I use it, the prisoner uses it, Bean Bean uses it, Skippy John has it available for her, and even my husband has it, although he doesn't usually do his. But so for everyone in our family, on the family plan to do it, plus I think there's six people optional. I think the prisoner shared it with a friend of hers. So six people. $120 a year to have, again, the premium version, which we do pay for, but there's a free option. So you can use Duo for free. Again, you don't have to pay for anything. And it is amazing. The free version works really well also. So no need to pay that extra money. Our last subject that we will be working on is psychology. Now this subject is going to be a group subject for us. Oh my gosh, the cats are distracting me. This is so bad. They won't go out because they won't stop meowing and now they won't stop playing with their toys. Oh, here's, come here. She doesn't really like being picked up, but this is Skittles. I don't know if you guys watch my other videos, but 
You met Max. He's super snuggly and adorable. She is cute and cranky. She doesn't like to be held. Anyway, I am totally off topic again. Psychology is going to be our group subject that we do as a family. We're using modern states, zero dollars. My main thing that I'm gonna be working on with both girls for our group subject is learning how to take notes, learning how to take effective notes, both from verbal lectures and from um, written material. So I could, if I wanted to, get on Modern States and the reading material, it's basically a textbook that's in PDF form, which you can print. You don't have to pay them to print it, but you have to pay to print it. Either if you have a great printer at home and you wanna print it there, then you're gonna end up paying for a ton of ink. Or I was looking into getting it printed and bound at the print shop here in town. I decided not to do that because it just, it was too expensive to be worth it for me because it was like 300 pages or something ridiculously huge. Originally I thought we could print it and then the girls could like highlight sections as we go through it together rather than have to write it all out. But then I'm like, no, I'm not gonna spend that extra money just so they don't have to write. And it's good to learn to take notes. So that's what we're going to do. We're also going to supplement that with YouTube. Specifically, we'll use Crash Course for their psychology, what do you call it, playlist? Yes, their psychology playlist, $0. I'm looking at my list and that is everything. So she will be doing extracurricular activities. Because we live in the state of Washington, we can participate in school sports for free. Therefore, those extracurricular activities, I don't have to pay for her to participate in. And so it's a wash. And we do have the option of her taking some out school classes, possibly during the winter months because she does softball in like the spring and the fall but during the winter, it's nice to have a little something extra. If we do that, that could change how much we spend, but that is totally optional. As far as our framework and what we needed, and I'm even gonna use that word needed, loose, I'm use that loosely because we could have gone without fix-it grammar and I could just be guiding her through sentence structures and grammar on my own, and I want to, so I purchased that curriculum, $20. That is what I've spent for Bean Bean for next year's for next year's curriculum. Not bad, right? Homeschooling doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to break the bank. You can homeschool, you can homeschool well, you can homeschool effectively while spending very little money. But I think, ooh, one more thing. Oh, I did grab an additional stack of books that I'm going to put up on our shelf as optional, but not optional reads. And so I have some classics here. I've got The Good Earth, Tom Sawyer, Treasure Island, Crime and Punishment, Weathering Heights, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Some books that I would consider to be classics that I think the kids should be exposed to. And so I know the prisoners already read some of these and I'm not going to make the girls read all of the books here. And I'm definitely not going to limit them to the books here because they're constantly reading. And I think that's fantastic. So I don't wanna overwhelm them with added books so that they don't get the, to read the things that bring them joy or so they get to the point where they just don't wanna read because they don't like what they're reading but I'm probably gonna ask Bean Bean to pick two, at least, books out of this stack to read next year to add for our English language arts. I am not adding this into my budget because A, I already had them, and B, these were totally just random books that I picked that were classics and absolutely can be found in any library, anywhere, so you don't have to pay for them. Putting those down. Okay. I think that sums it up. Those are our plans for her eighth grade year. If you have any questions about what we're using, how we're using it, why we're using it, or comments on what you think that we could include that we didn't consider, or something that you think that we have included that you're like, why would you do that? Drop a comment in the box below and let me know. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great 
homeschool year in this coming year. I hope you enjoy the planning process. It's kind of my favorite part of the whole thing is the planning process. I'm gonna pull my own hair. But otherwise, I will catch you next time.